What's up guys? Welcome to Smokestack Joe's. I'm Joe and today we're going to be doing the best St. Louis style ribs on the pit barrel cooker. If you don't have a pit barrel cooker, you could do this on your pellet grill, Kamada Joe, offset smoker, whatever you have. This will work phenomenal. I'm going to show you the rub to use and I'm going to show you a delicious mop sauce to put on it. So let's get to it. We got the pit barrel lit. Now, rub consisting of two tablespoons brown sugar, two tablespoons chili powder, two tablespoons paprika, two tablespoons black pepper, one tablespoon jalapeno pepper powder. If you don't have this, cayenne will do. It's one tablespoon garlic powder, one tablespoon onion powder, and last but not least, a little controversial MSG. You don't have to use this, but I'm telling you, this is good. I'm going with two tablespoons of MSG. All right, you're gonna wanna get in there and mix this with your hands, get that brown sugar all broken up. All right, so what you got here is a beautiful rib rub. I'm telling you right now, this is some good stuff. But I'm sure you're asking, I know you noticed what's missing from this rub, salt. What I've started doing is when I make a rub, I don't put the salt in. I'll take the piece of meat and I salt it to how I like first. Then I can put as much rub as I want without it being too salty. I would highly suggest that. It's a great way to go about it. So that is a quick and easy rib rub. Next step, prep our ribs and rub them with this delicious concoction we've made. Let's trim some ribs. We got these beautiful St. Louis style pork spare ribs. Baby back ribs will cook a lot faster. You're gonna have a lot more meat on there usually, but this has a great fat content. And if cooked properly, these are some delicious ribs. The first thing we're gonna do, hack off the last rib end. Most, a lot of times you, the butcher will, they'll cut this rib right here. So you'll just have a half a rib. Go ahead and cut that off. These ribs are pretty good. What I will do, find this last bone right here, square this off here. Now don't go throwing this away. If you cook enough ribs and you start saving these pieces, trim this off, delicious for sausage. This is great meat. So don't, don't be throwing that away. This rack of ribs actually looks pretty good. You never know what you're gonna get when you get ribs. Not bad here. Let's flip this over then. You can see how nice this is. This is all gonna get burnt up right there on this edge piece. So what I will do, I'm gonna trim this last bone off like I talked about earlier. Just square that up. And again, save that for sausage. Now, the question, leave the membrane or take it off? I'm a fan of removing this membrane. A lot of people like to keep it on there. You got good fat underneath here. And if you cook it right, I'm sure it's fine. So I like to go ahead and remove that membrane. So to remove this membrane, easiest way is to find a spot like over here. Work your finger underneath it, slowly work it under there, then just give it a yank. And if you're lucky, it usually comes right off in one piece like that, almost. Then last, you just want to give these a rinse. Get all this bone fragment off here, any of this loose stuff. Just rinse them under some nice cold water. All right, once they're rinsed, just give them a nice pat dry, best you can. All right. Now we'll season. Got our rib rub. A lot of people will put some sort of binder on here, maybe some mustard, olive oil, Worcestershire sauce. I don't really like to use that stuff unless for whatever reason you need to get this tacky to get your rub to stick. These, we rinsed them, they're still wet, they'll be fine. Go ahead and salt it to your liking. Try and get the sides. I'm using this floor to sol fancy, fancy stuff. It's been great on everything I've used it for. Now, we go on with our rib rub, then you can be pretty generous with the stuff because like I said, we don't have salt on here. Won't get too salty. Get the edges. The 
flip these over. Some more salt. Then finish it with the rib rub. All right, it's looking pretty good there. What I like to do is let these sit for about five, 10 minutes. See like this, this rub's gonna soak in. Then we're gonna throw them on the pit barrel. Let's do it, let's get these ribs on. I'm gonna put these bone side down. Try and turn it away from the flame if we can. There we go. Those are gonna be on there for about an hour. All right, so we got the ribs on the smoker. We're gonna let those go for about an hour until we check them. We're gonna see if that rub sets. Once that rub sets, we wanna mop them with a nice sauce, then flip them over, mop the other side, let them sit. While we wait for the ribs to be done, we're gonna make ourselves a mop sauce. I like doing a vinegar style sauce. Heavy with the vinegar, nice and thin, that's the way I like it. I'm gonna show you how I make it. It's really up to you how you wanna go with these ingredients. I'm gonna show you everything that I use. You can follow these instructions, that's fine. If you want something basic, get your favorite barbecue sauce. Take apple cider vinegar 50-50 with that barbecue sauce, mix it up, and then you'll, so you have a nice thin consistency, and you'll be fine that way. So, I'm gonna show you how I make my sauce. Let's do this. Get yourself a pot. About a medium high, medium heat. Your main ingredient, apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna say about a half a cup. You can go with white vinegar, it's up to you. Heat that up, start adding some ingredients. First thing I like to add is some ketchup. Maybe a quarter cup. Next, some molasses. Maybe an eighth of a cup or so. Then, honey, probably another eighth of a cup. Then some hot sauce, your favorite hot sauce. Nothing crazy, I'm going with red hot. Frank's Red Hot, probably an eighth of a cup or so. Now, I like to add a little bit of soy sauce, a splash. I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons brown sugar. I like to add a little mustard powder, maybe a half a tablespoon or so. For a kick, I'm gonna go a little cayenne, maybe a teaspoon. Then some crushed red pepper, about a teaspoon. Garlic powder, go about a teaspoon of garlic powder. And last, some black pepper, I'm gonna go heavy on the black pepper. You know, let this heat up, give it a good stir. As you can see, it's still quite thin. And that's what we want. We want a nice thin sauce. And that black pepper, cayenne, and crushed red pepper is gonna give this a little bit of a kick. If that's not what you're looking for, go without those. And add more honey, add more brown sugar. You like it sweet. Like I said, it's up to you. Make the sauce the way you want it. The last thing I like to do is add some lemon. Now this lemon, this is gonna add some fantastic flavor. All right, so let this thing come to a boil. You want all, this, all these flavors to infuse nicely. The vinegar mixed with the lemon, oh, it's just a great combo. Give it a try. This is perfect for any pork. I actually use this on brisket too. Once the brisket's done, I'll put a little bit of the sauce on there. Oh my God, it's just fantastic. It's just Fantasia. Yep, this is looking good. We're gonna shut this off, let this cool down. Let's check these ribs, they might be ready. Give them a look. All right, so the ribs have been on for about an hour. Let's see how they look. They're looking pretty good. What we want, as you see some, we got some pullback here. That's good. We want this bark to set before we put our mop on and flip them over. I'm gonna give it a poke. Oh, it's good. Feels good here. It's a little soft still. I think I'm gonna give it about a 20 minutes more, maybe a half an hour. Check back in. All right, so it's been about another half an hour. Let's check these ribs. Oh yeah. These are looking good. Oh yeah. That's what we're looking for, guys. Bark is set. Let's mop these, flip them over. Here's a delicious mop sauce. You don't want to rub it in. You don't want to lose that seasoning. You kind of just drip it on there. All right, now, gently flip these over. Oh, look at that. Don't forget, mop this side. Get a little pooling on this back side, that's all right. Let's get these rebars back in here. Let's just keep cooking. We're gonna go another half an hour on that. All right, so it's been about another half hour. Let's take a look. 
Okay, yeah. These are looking good. We give them another mop flip, checking for tenderness. Let's do it. Give these a good mop and we just want to check these for tenderness now. Oh yeah. Not too tender, but it's going right through. That's what we're looking for. These are about done. I'm gonna give these five minutes just to set up and then pull them off, wrap them. All right, ribs are done. We're gonna pull them off. Wrap them, let them sit for about 20, 30 minutes. All right, get some tin foil. Let's get these ribs. Yep, I don't know. You might think these are burnt. This is not burnt. It's not crispy. That is soft. That is good. That's what we're going to do. These beautiful ribs here. We just want to. I want to wrap these up. Not too tight. I want to save some of that good bark. Now, we're going to let these beautiful ribs sit here in this tin foil. Maybe 15 minutes if I can wait that long. You want to let these rest for sure. You want these to steam a little bit more. Just going to get some great softness going on here with everything. Let it rest. Go do something else. Make yourself a drink. Watch a YouTube video. Maybe smoke stack Joe's. But let these rest. Once they're done, I'll be back. I'm gonna slice these up and give them a try. Let's open these ribs up. They've been resting for about 15 minutes now. Oh yeah, babe. These smell fantastic. Get some glues. These are sticky, sticky ribs. All right. Gonzo. Yep. Oh yeah. To cut these, I like to flip them over. So you can see where the bones are. Let's give these a cutting. Oh, these are tender. Yep. Yep. These are gonna be good. Oh. What's that? Mmm. Oh my god. Yeah. Got a little heat to them. These are juicy too. Yeah. Guys, look at that. It's a hell of a rib. I'll tell you what. Juicy. Oh, juicy. Juicy. These are good ribs man so good all right i gotta snap some photos and we're gonna give these a try so we made these beautiful st louis style pork ribs using the pit barrel cooker they couldn't have come out any better honestly all right let's give one a try which one do we want this one it's called my name let's give this a shot Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. -hmm. mm. <clears throat> yeah. It's got a little kick to it. You saw all the peppers I used. If you're not looking for that kind of a kick, lay back on the pepper, go with the sweet, but I love this. I'm a spicy guy. And look at this. Perfect bite. Not too tender, but just tender enough. You gotta try these on the pit barrel cooker. The direct heat cooking, it's phenomenal. All those juices dripping down on the coal, bringing that flavor back up, it's just great. Love to stick around, but I gotta enjoy these. I gotta eat these. Till next time, please subscribe, like, follow me on Instagram, Smokestack Joe's.
great pictures and recipes on there. Go on Instagram, follow me, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be putting out a bunch of videos, hopefully. Thank you for watching, if you watched. Till next time, peace out. Thank you.